Shining hair. That's what every girl wants. And that's the way your hair will be when you use Fitch's new cream shampoo. Fitch's cream shampoo leaves hair dreamy soft like moonlight, shining like bright starlight. Fitch is made with two beneficial beauty aids, lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin is used to soften the hair, to give it a brand new look. Olive oil is used to bring out sparkling highlights to leave your hair gleaming and lustrous. And Fitch's cream shampoo is easy to use. Just a small dab whips into heaps of lather to thoroughly cleanse your hair and scalp. Then, just rinse with plain water and every bubble of suds is gone. Your hair is soft and bright, gloriously right. Looks as though it had been brushed and brushed and brushed. Fitch's cream shampoo is thrifty, too. Compare the size of the jar. Compare its low cost and buy it at drug or toilet goods counters. That's Fitch's Cream Shampoo, made with lanolin and olive oil for softer, shinier hair. The F.W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch Shampoo, presents the Fitch Bandwagon with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Robert North, Walter Sharp and his music, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Ten days ago, the board of directors of the Fitch Company met in their office in Des Moines, Iowa, to decide on gifts to be sent to the stockholders of the company. Now, let's go back ten days and look in on the meeting. Mr. F.W. Fitch is speaking. Gentlemen, we've decided on presents for all our stockholders except one. What are we going to get for Phil Harris? But F.W., he's only got one share of stock. Why do we have to get him anything? Oh, that's not the Christmas spirit. W.Z. Phil Harris is entitled to a present. Don't you agree, J.R.? Huh? Uh, what's that? Did, did somebody say something? I said we ought to send Phil Harris a Christmas present. I have a suggestion, F.W. Yeah? Why don't you send Mr. Harris a bust of you? Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't do that, W.Z. It would seem awfully hammy of me. No, I couldn't give Harris a bust of me as a Christmas present. Well, I don't see why not. That's what you gave us last year. <laughs> Did I give you a bust of me last year? Last year. The year before and the year before that. <laughs> I have 19 busts of you in my house. <laughs> really? Well, well, where do you keep them, J.R.? Well, I... Oh, if I tell him, I'll get canned. <laughs> Never mind, J.R., I think it's an excellent suggestion. I'll send Mr. Harris a bust of me. I'll pack it well in Excelsior but and... But uh... you. you said yourself it's a little hammy. Yes, Kabibble. Let him call me a ham. We'll send the bust. And now, a week later, we look into the Harris home where Phil is writing a letter for the children. Hey, look, kids. Uh, maybe you'd better write your own letter to Santa Claus. After all, you know, when uh, Santa gets a letter, it should, like, uh, should look like it was written by a kid. Well, with your spelling, he couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> Never mind, Wingy. <laughs> Say, girls, do we have to write to Santa Claus? Of course we do, Daddy. When he writes to Santa Claus, he brings us whatever we ask for. I want a doll and a baby carriage. And I want a party dress and a new scooter. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll write it down. Dear Santa, please bring us a doll, a baby carriage, a party dress, a new scooter, a pool table, and some cute chalk hold and it, a light Oscar, color. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Why are you asking for a pool table? If this stuff works, I want to be in on it. <laughs> Are 
you sure Santa will be here this year? Certainly, honey. He never fails. On Christmas Eve, he'll land on the roof with his reindeer, slide down the chimney, and land in the fireplace, and then with a big, booming voice, he'll say... Good morning, Philip. <laughs> should have had a fire going in that fireplace. <laughs> Hello, Alice. Hello, children. Oh, oh Philip, here's a package the postman just gave me. It's for you, and it's from Des Moines, Iowa. Say, I wonder what it is and who it's from. Well, if it's from Des Moines, it must be from the Fitch Company. And through the brown paper, I can see it's gift wrap, so it must be a gift. And since it's only two weeks before Christmas, it must be a Christmas present. Thank you, J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> Do you mind if I open this? Well, you can't open it till Christmas. Well, I'm just taking the outside wrapping off. Hey, look how pretty it's gift wrapped. Look, there's a sticker on there, Phil. What does it say? Oh, wait a minute. I'll see. Season's greetings to my favorite entertainer, Phil Heron. From your pal, F.W. Fitch, maker of Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo and Fitch's new cream shampoo, the only shampoo containing both lanolin and olive oil, <laughs> you can purchase this shampoo. Oh, what a sneaky way to get into a commercial. <laughs> He's a cute guy. He had me reading that before I realized what it said. Phil, I just thought of something. You didn't buy Mr. Fitch a Christmas present. Holy smoke, no, I forgot. Well, look, it's not too late. Now, listen, if we buy something today and send it out, then he'll get it in time. But now I want to get him something real nice. But, but what? Well, I have a suggestion, Philip. Uh, why don't you get Mr. Fitch a gift such as I received last year? I found it the most practical of my gifts, and now I, I just wouldn't be comfortable without one. Yeah? What is it? A flannel nightshirt with stocking cap to match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kid. 23 skidoo and ta ra ra boom da. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, don't make fun of it. I know, but a nightshirt and a stocking cap. How square can a guy get? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Bill. I have some Christmas shopping to do. Why don't you meet me in about an hour at Saks Fifth Avenue and we'll look for something for Mr. Fitch. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll see a nice smoking jacket or a robe or a pair of... Yeah, we could... Oh, wait a minute, honey. I'll answer the door. Hi, Curly. Hi. Hello, Frankie. Hey, Frankie, guess what? Why? I just got a Christmas present from the sponsor. From the sponsor? Ain't that nice of him? You... I didn't get one. <laughs> Bill, I'm going to leave now. Oh, hello, Frankie. How are you? I'm a little hurt. Well, I sent Curly a present and not me. You know, I'm on the show, too. I know, but that's different, Frankie. After all, who's the star of the show? Alice. <laughs> oh, well, let me put it this way. Who's the comedian on the show? Who gets all the laughs? I do. <laughs> well, let me frame it this way. Who's the brains of my radio show? Your writers. <laughs> there must be some way of asking this question so I can come out on top. <laughs> I don't think so, Curly. Now, look, Frankie. <laughs> Bill got the present because he's a stockholder of the company. Fine stockholder. They're holding it in trust for him. He doesn't even know how much he has. Hey! Hey, maybe the stock is in that package. I'm going to open Phil, that. Phil, don't you well, dare open that until Christmas. I'm leaving now, and don't forget, meet me in an hour at Sachs. Bye. So long, honey. Mm. Goodbye, Alice. Mm. Frankie, you don't have to kiss her, too. <laughs> now, remember, I don't want either one of you to open that package. Open a package? Oh, we wouldn't think of doing a thing like that. Of course not. Well, I hope not. Goodbye. She gone, Curly? Yeah. <laughs> Frankie, put it down. It's my package, and I'm going to open it. <laughs> well, all right, but hurry up. I'm kind of anxious to see what's... Hey, hey, home. Got your groceries here. Uh-huh, Mr. Harris. Hi, Mr. Mumley. Hi, Judith. You go away. Will you kid? We're busy. Yeah, see. Hey, what's in that package? A Christmas present? Yeah. Something that I got from my sponsor. What's he telling you something for? Well, he's been listening to the radio shows I've been doing for him, and he sent it to me to show what he thinks of me. That's why. Gee, I can't wait. I wonder what's in this package. Is it ticking? <laughs> no. Then I can't imagine. <laughs> Hurry up and open it, will you, Curly? Okay, okay. There's a lot of paper on it. Well, well, what is it? Gee. 
Just what I wanted, Excelsior. <laughs> Oh, okay, I got it off. Hey, here's the present. Hey, ain't that something? Must be, but what? <laughs> Here is a funny-looking thing. It almost looks like a face. Hey. <laughs> hey, it is. It's a man's head. A man's head? I better look through the package for the rest of the body. <laughs> is a bust of F. Frankie, I just heard our option drop. <laughs> what do you mean? This is a bust of F. W. Fitch. F. W. Yeah. Handsome sort of devil, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. You know some Franklin? He's the uh, rakish, debonair type. Yeah. <laughs> sort of a continental air about him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, something he's a combination of Tyrone Power, Gregory Peck, Charles Boyer. Now, Curly, uh, Curly, let's not overdo this. For what he's paying us, he ain't that good looking. <laughs> I still think he's a funny looking geezer. <laughs> he is not. He's beautiful. Certainly he is. <laughs> Gee whiz. It's a wonderful gift. <laughs> Just what I needed. <laughs> What do you mean, funny looking? Well, look at it. It's yellow and coarse and dry. Looks like a mess of shredded wheat. Julia, that's the exalted. <laughs> hey, I think that's a very nice gift, Curly. You ought to get something nice to send to Mr. Fish. I know that. Hey, uh, incidentally, uh, what do you think I ought to send him? Why don't you send him back his butt? <laughs> Beat it, you poor man's Roddy McDowell. Get out of here. <laughs> Go cut tomatoes, you son, you. <laughs> I'm always bothered with him. Every... Hey, look, Frankie, what? seriously. Now, Alice suggested that I get him something maybe like a, you know, a, like a nice smoking jacket. Oh, Curly, that's too corny. <laughs> what you send him something personal, something he can use? Where does he live? Iowa. What's that? <laughs> Frankie, don't be too stupid. I was a state. It's a western state. Right next to Rhode Island. <laughs> Indian country, huh? Yeah. Well, look, Curly, as long as he's living in Indian country, let's get him something practical. Let's get him a cowboy suit. <laughs> cowboy suit? Sure. Yeah. Oh, but look, Frankie, he's a businessman. Oh, so and... what? They all wear them out there. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen them on them out there. Maybe you're right. Sure. Hey, Frankie, I'll tell you, why don't you come along with me to Saks, and then you can help Alice and me pick one out. Okay, Curly, let's go. Hey, you want to know something, Frankie? What? I kind of envy Mr. Fitch living in that Indian country. You know, they take things easy out there. If your temper's getting the top hand, all you got to do is just stop and pass that peace pipe, bury that hat you like the chuck toes, chick a toes, chat a hoochie chip won't do. If you're feeling mad as a wet hand, mad as you can possibly get, then pass that peace pipe, bury that Tommy Hawk like those of you, make Cherokee shibbles of eggs, too. Don't be cranky. Try to use a little restraint. Pull that hanky. And wipe off all that war paint. And if you find yourself in a fury, be your own judge and your own jury. Pass that, that peace pipe, bury that hat. you like the top toes, chick a toes, chat a hoochie chip or two. If you want to hover out west, too, you will soon discover it's best to pass that peace pipe, bury that hat. you like the cho-cho-chongo, chat a hoochie chick a 
he sung them colonial days. You knew the ceremonial ways to pass that peace pipe and bury that Tommy Hawk like those Jimmy Shepard Jack and Jacobies too. Pull your ears in, try to use a little control. When all clears in, you be top man on the totem pole. So if you want to be an all right guy, not a long face to the night guy, write that apology and dispatch it. Cause when you call this grand to patch it, that's that piece, fight and bury that hatchet. Like the Chuck, cause Chick is cause Chattahoochee, Chippewa, those to GMX, Cherokee, Shapoo, the Fex, those to you, the Beast, Chepa, Texas, Chick of Beast, Joe, 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 Chuck, those Chattanooga, Zika, Rose, Do. Frankie, huh? here's the spot where we're supposed to meet Alice right here in the men's department. But I don't see her. Do you see her anywhere? No, I don't. Hey, Curly, while we're waiting, why don't we take a look at some cowboy suits? Here in Saks? Hey, do you think they sell that kind of stuff in here? Well, sure. This is a swanky place. We can get a real nice one here. Let's ask that clerk over there. Hey! Hey, Carnation, come here! <laughs> Are you perchance addressing me, sir? Uh, uh, yeah, do you carry, uh, everything in menswear? Most assuredly, sir. We have all the necessary accoutrements that are requisite to the sartorial splendor of the impeccably clad. <laughs> hey, Curly, did he say something? He must have. His mouth was moving. <laughs> Gentlemen, I merely stated that we have everything in the line of clothing a man could desire. Now, what is it you wish, please? I want a cowboy suit. Well, yippee I okay. <laughs> Look, don't get gay, Buster, huh? Come on, now, just show me. Uh, let me see some cowboy suits. Oh, yes, of course, sir. And just what sort of cowboy suit would you like? Well, any kind of one. Why a tonto? I'm speaking to the lone <laughs> lady. <laughs> Look, Bud, will you listen to me? I just want a regular cowboy suit. I see, sir. I have just the thing for you. A pair of shafts that's already bowed in one leg. <laughs> <laughs> bowed in one leg? Yes. It's for cowboys who ride side that. <laughs> Say, can I get a straight man to wait on me? <laughs> hey, Curly, here's an outfit that looks pretty good. Of course, it's $75. So what? Uh, $75. Yeah. For the boss. Well, I don't care how much it costs. Money's no object now. Hey, look, I'll take it and you can uh, just charge it, Bob. Very well. What's the name, please? Alice Faye. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. You look much better in pictures, man. <laughs> Please, look, just have the gift wrapped, will you? And then I'll stop back for it in a few minutes. Very well. It'll only take a few minutes. It wasn't very nice, though. You too. Pretty clever. Hey, look, Frankie, I'll tell you what'll happen. Now, look, uh, I hope Alice ain't going to mind that I went and picked the present out without her, but it, it's going to be a cute suit. And, you know, she sort of had her mind set on that smoking jacket. Oh, and I... there you are. What kept you so long? Oh, hello, honey. Uh, well, look, Frankie and oh, I just Well, bought... I hope you don't mind, but while I was waiting, I bought Mr. Fitz a stunning smoking jacket. Yeah, Alice, but I was going to tell I'm you see that... I'm having a gift wrapped, and I just know Mr. Fitz will love it. Yeah, but Alice, do you think a smoking jacket is nice enough? Oh, listen, the one I picked is beautiful, and Mr. Fitz will adore it. Now, let's go and pick it up so we can mail it. Come on, fellas, come on, let's hurry. Okay, honey, okay, go ahead. We're right in back of you. Hey, Frankie, better go back and cancel that cowboy suit. I don't want to. I like it. I think that's what we ought to send. Never mind. Now, cancel the suit and go back there and take it back. No, wait a minute. What? Look, I got to get something for William for Christmas, so I'll give him the cowboy suit. <laughs> Maybe he'll take the hint and go west. <laughs> Isn't that a stunning creation on that model over there? How'd we get in the women's department? Oh, I just thought we'd stroll through in case somebody saw something he might want to buy for somebody for Christmas. 
This kid's as subtle as a sailor with a six-hour pass. <laughs> hey, look, honey, I'll tell you what you do. Now, you go ahead and get the smoking jacket, and we'll wait here, and then we'll meet all you right, after you get all off. Right, all right, Bye. Hey, Frankie. What? Hey, Alice likes that thing on the model, so I'm going to take this opportunity and get it to work for Christmas. Now, look, you stay here and buy it, and then I'll join Alice so she doesn't suspect anything. Okay, sure. Wait a minute. Now, wait. I want to write out a card to put in. Okay, there. Now, you buy it and put this card in. Okay. Shall I charge this to Alice, too? <laughs> no. I'll pay for this. I can get it from her later. <laughs> now, go ahead. Get it and put this card in. Yeah, okay, Curly. And I'll pick up the cowboy suit, too. I'll meet you back here. <laughs> Here's Mr. Fitch's present, all wrapped. Oh, gee, well, let me have it, and uh, I'll address it, and then I'll mail it Curly. for you. Hey, Curly, oh, I took Frank. care of everything. Oh, I see you've been doing a little shopping, Frankie. What have you got in those two packages? Uh, uh these. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's something I got from my grandmother. Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah, she's a good-natured schnook. I always get it somewhere. <laughs> Hey, come on, let's get out of here because I want to take Mr. Fitch's present over and mail it. Uh, oh, well, I'll do it for you, Curly. I, uh, gotta get some stamps, anyhow. Oh, all right, thanks, Frankie. Now, look, you mail it and then we get you down to the car. Meet us down. Yeah, there, okay, huh? wait for me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gee, I hate to see Curly send Fitch a smoking jacket. Don't show no originality. But if the old boy got a cowboy suit, he'd love Curly. <laughs> of course, the only way he could get the cowboy suit would be for me to mail the wrong package. Oh, Remley, what a despicable, conniving thought. <laughs> I do it. Yeah, I wish Frankie would hurry. Hey, honey, you know something? Do you think we spent enough for Mr. Fitch's present? Oh, Phil, it isn't what you spent for a present. It's the thought behind it. Remember... The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. The stars belong to everyone. They gleam there for you and me. The flowers play, the robins play, the sunbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine. And love can come to everyone. The best things in life are free. The welcome is, remember this, that world we think cannot be far from. For the moon belongs to everyone. For the best, best things in life are free. The stars belong to I thought you'd never get home, Annis. Uh, what did you and Philip buy for Mr. Fitch? We sent him a smoking jacket, Willie. Oh. Yes, and it's a very different-looking smoking jacket. That it is, that it is. I <laughs> uh, say, Curly, I gotta run along. What do you want me to do with these two presents for Alice and Willie? Oh, Frankie, now you spoiled it. You always have to do... You weren't supposed to say anything. Well, you, you bought a present for me, Philip? Oh, yes, I did. Here. Oh. I might as well give it to you now, but remember, don't open it till Christmas. No. Oh, I can't wait till Christmas. No, I just have to open it now. No, wait a minute, Willie. That ain't nice. Oh, oh. look at this. A smoking jacket. A smoking jacket? Oh. But I bought you something else. Oh, those careless clerks. <laughs> now, wait a minute, William. Wait a minute. This is the smoking jacket I bought for Mr. Fitz. 
Blakey, what package did you make? Uh, would you excuse me, folks? I've got to get down to the delicatessen and help a guy file a warts off the pickles. He's got a... Family! <laughs> Frankie, what did you do? Now, did you mail him the What's other... What's in this package? Oh, I'd better open it and see. Now, wait a minute, Alice. Don't do that. That's your present, and I this don't want you... This is my present. Oh, yeah. Do you like it? Sure, it's just what I always wanted, a cowboy suit. <laughs> you got the cowboy suit? Frankie, don't look at me like that, Curly. This I didn't plan on. <laughs> Oh, by mistake, I must have mailed the presents you got for Alice. You sent Mr. Fitch the thing I got for Alice? Oh, no, no, no. Well, what do you know, J.R.? I just received this package from Bill Harris. Now, wasn't it nice of him to send me a Christmas present? If you say so, S.W., what's in it? I don't know, but I'll open it and see. I just can't wait till Christmas. Well, I'll be a... What is it, F.W.? What did he send you? A sheer black negligee. <laughs> don't you think that'll be a little too chilly for you? <laughs> and just look at this card he sent with it. What does it say? Dear Dreamboat, <laughs> on you this will look good. <laughs> Love, Curly. <laughs> Bill and Alice will be back in just a moment. Is your shampoo doing right by you? Yes, is your shampoo doing right by you? My shampoo lathers all right, but it doesn't remove my dandruff. I've tried one shampoo after another. They all suds up and rinse out, but... I still have dandruff. If your shampoo is letting you down when it comes to removing dandruff, switch to Fitch. Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo. It's guaranteed to remove all dandruff. Medical authorities say there are two kinds of dandruff. One is loose and flaky. It's the unsightly kind. The other clings to the scalp. It's the invisible, irritating kind. If your present shampoo is doing only half the job, removing only part of your dandruff, remember... Fitch removes both kinds completely. So be free of unsightly dandruff. Be free of invisible, irritating dandruff. Yes, be free of all embarrassing dandruff. Fitch is the only shampoo whose guarantee to remove dandruff with first application is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. So switch to Fitch at drug counters, barber, and beauty shop. Ask for Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo. Fitch shampoo does right by you. <laughs> to be ashamed of yourself. Why did you and Frankie open the Christmas present Mr. Fitch sent you? Well, we had to open it. Frankie said it was the only way I could show that I had the Christmas spirit. What do you mean? Well, I had to find out how much Fitch spent on me so I'd know how much to spend on him. <laughs> That's the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Tune in next week when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch Bandwagon with Alice Bay and Phil Harris. This program was written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, directed by Paul Phillips. Alice Bay appears to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. The part of Frankie was played by Elliot Lewis. Laugh a while, let a song be your style, you bitch. softer, shinier hair, use Fitch's new cream shampoo. It's made with both lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin to soften, olive oil for sparkling highlights. Try Fitch's cream shampoo, Bill Foreman speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.